uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Amal Mukhtar. It is 8 p.m. here in Cairo. Time to start our English transmission. And we started with the uh, Panorama News. We start our news with the headlines. CC receives Board of Trustees of Bibliotheca Alexandrina. Israeli occupation forces continue aggression in Gaza and West Bank. And Iranians uh, mourn uh, President Ibrahim Raisi and seven uh, others uh, killed in a helicopter crash. Welcome back the news in details. Uh, President Abdel Fattah Sisi received the Board of Trustees of Bibliotheca Alexandrina, which includes a group of prominent Egyptian and international figures. Presidential spokesman Councillor Ahmed Fahmi said President Sisi stressed uh, the significance of the pivotal role that is played uh, by the library in uh, dismantling uh, and uh, deepening knowledge uh, and science. Uh, this is in addition uh, to encouraging research, reading and cultural uh, work in a way that supports dialogue uh, among uh, civil civilizations, uh, as well as uh, broadening uh, common understanding uh, and coexistence among uh, peoples. Uh, President Sisi reiterated uh, that uh, realizing the importance of uh, richness uh, of human diversity and uh, devoting uh, the principles of citizenship are uh, the basis uh, for protecting the social uh, fabric. Uh, the head of state also referred to the need for the library to complete Egypt's mission to form uh, brave bridges among cultures and uh, to enhance peace and development. Israeli occupation forces uh, thrust uh, deeper into the Jibalia camp in uh, northern Gaza on Tuesday, uh, laying waste uh, to residential districts uh, which, uh, tank, with uh, tank and air bombardments, uh, while Israeli airstrikes killed at least five people in the southern uh, city of Rafah. Details in the following uh, report. Israeli forces battled Hamas in Gaza on Tuesday after Israeli Prime Minister angrily dismissed a bid for an international arrest warrant against him on war crimes charges in the Palestinian territory. U.S. President Joe Biden backed Netanyahu in condemning as outrageous the bid by the International Criminal Court's prosecutor. Israel's military reported ground combat and air strikes on 70 targets in Gaza in 24 hours, while its forces were also engaged in deadly clashes in the other major Palestinian territory the occupied West Bank. At least seven Palestinians were killed in the northern city of Jenin, the Ramallah-based health ministry said, as the army said it was fighting there. But Palestinian official news agency Wafa reported that a hospital surgeon, a school teacher and a student were among those killed in Jenin. 1.1 million people face catastrophic levels of hunger and Gaza remains on the brink of famine, while three quarters of its people have been forcibly displaced, some up to five times, according to the Hamas-run Treasury Health Ministry, Israel's retaliatory offensive against Hamas has killed at least 35,562 people in Gaza, also mostly civilians. Recent fighting has raged around the far southern city of Rafah, the last area that faced ground invasion. The World Health Organization said Jabalia's El Adwa hospital had been under siege for two days, trapping 170 patients and staff members. Israel launched its ground assault on parts of Rafah early this month, defying international position including from Topalai, the United States, which worried for the more than one million civilians trapped there. Cyprus uh, said on Tuesday that four ships uh, from the United States and France were transporting aid from Larnaca port to the Gaza Strip amid uh, the humanitarian crisis uh, there. Details follow. Four ships from the United States and France are transporting aid from Larnaca port to the Gaza Strip amid the spiraling humanitarian crisis there. Presidential press conference told State Radio that 1,000 tons of aid were shipped from Cyprus to the besieged Palestinian territory between Friday and Sunday. He said the vessels were shutting between Gaza and the East Mediterranean island, a distance of about 360 kilometers. Large quantities of aid from Britain, Romania, the United Arab Emirates, the United States, 
States and other countries have accumulated at Franca port. Cyprus president told reporters on Tuesday that maritime aid effort was on track. The aid shipped from Cyprus is entering Gaza via a temporary U.S.-built floating pier where the shipments are offloaded for distribution. The United Nations has warned of famine as Gaza's 2.4 million people face shortages of food, safe water, medicines and fuel amid the Israeli-Hamas war that has devastated the coastal territory. Aid deliveries by truck have slowed to a trickle since Israeli forces took control of the Palestinian side of the Rafah crossing with Egypt in early May. Israelis retaliatory offensive against Hamas has killed at least 35,647 people in Gaza, also mostly civilians, according to the figures provided by the Hamas-run Territory Health Ministry. Israeli occupation forces killed seven Palestinians during a raid in the occupied West Bank city of Jenin on Tuesday. The Palestinian health ministry in Ramallah said nine more people had been injured, including two in a critical condition. The Israeli occupation military said its troops had launched what it claimed a so-called counter-terrorism operation in Jenin, and they were fighting with armed men, Palestinian officials. News agency reported that among those killed was a surgeon from the Jenin government hospital, a school teacher and a student. Following the raid, all schools in Jenin and the adjacent refugee camp were evacuated. The West Bank has seen a surge in violence for more than a year, but particularly since the Israeli Hamas war erupted on the 7th of October. Yemen's Houthi rebels uh, said on Tuesday uh, they had uh, downed a USMQ-9 drone over al Badia province in southern Yemen. In a televised uh, statement, the group's military spokesperson said the drone was targeted with a locally made surface-to-air missile and that videos uh, to support the claim would be released. The Houthis said last Friday they uh, downed another USMQ-9 drone over the the southeastern province of Marib. The U.S. military acknowledged uh, reports, uh, however, did not comment. It confirmed it would be the second uh, MQ-9 repair drone downed by the Houthis over the past week as they press their campaign over the Israeli-Hamas war in the Gaza Strip. Tens of uh, thousands uh, mourned Iran's President Ibrahim Raisi and seven members of uh, his uh, end court, uh, including Foreign Minister Hossein Amir Abdullahian. On uh, Tuesday, after his death in a helicopter crash uh, amid uh, political uncertainty ahead of an election for his successor next month, the helicopter had lost communication while it was on its way back to uh, Tabriz uh, after Raisi attended a joint inauguration of a dam with his. Uh, as a counterpart on the common border. The details in the following report. Thousands of Iranians turned out to mourn President Ibrahim Raisi in the city of Tabriz on Tuesday after he was killed in a helicopter crash near the Azerbaijan border at the weekend along with his foreign minister and seven others. State TV broadcast live images of mourners, many of them dressed in black, beating their chests while a truck covered in white flowers carrying the caskets wrapped in the national flag was driven slowly through the crowd. A a procession led by a semi-truck carrying the caskets of the dead moved through the narrow streets of downtown Tabriz, the closest major city near the site of the crash on Sunday. From Tabriz, Raisi's body was taken to the Shiite clerk center of Qom later on Tuesday before being moved to Tehran where huge banners hailing him as the martyr of the service have appeared around the city. In Qom, the procession moved toward the city's main shrine of uh, Masuma as mourners waved the Shiite red flag and the yellow flag of the Iran-backed Lebanese Hezbollah group. On Wednesday, a funeral presided over by Khamenei will then turn into a procession as well. On Thursday, Raisi's hometown of Berjand will see a procession followed by a funeral and a burial at the Imam Riza Shrine in the holy city of Mashhad, the only Imam of the Shiite faith 
buried in Iran. Iran declared five days of mourning, encouraging people, including government employees and school children, to attend the public mourning sessions. No cause has yet been offered by Iran's government for the crash, which took place in a foggy mountain range in a decades-old helicopter. Iran's military, not its civil aviation authority, will investigate and later offer a report. A massive search and rescue operation started on Sunday when two other helicopters in Raisi's convoy lost contact with his aircraft amid harsh weather conditions in the mountainous region. 63-year-old Raisi had been viewed as a possible successor for Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei ahead of planned June 28th elections. The Kremlin said on uh, Tuesday it was uh, very curious uh, that the United States appeared ready to use sanctions against uh, the International Criminal Court uh, whose uh, prosecutor requested uh, arrest warrants uh, for uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, his uh, defense chief uh, and three Hamas leaders uh, over alleged war crimes. Kremlin spokesman uh, Dmitry Peskov uh, said that uh, as uh, Russia was not a party to the Rome Starry dispute uh, which established the ICC, Moscow did not recognize the court's jurisdiction. Meanwhile, China expressed hope the ICC would uphold an objective position in accordance with the law after the prosecutor requested arrest warrants for the Israeli officials. A Chinese foreign ministry spokesman called for an end to the collective punishment of the Palestinian people. Meanwhile, uh, Israeli Defense Minister Yaouf Galant described the request by the International Cor Criminal uh, Court Prosecutor for arrest warrants uh, against him and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu as a disgraceful bid to interfere in the Gaza war. In his uh, statement announcing the application for arrest warrants, ICC Prosecutor Karim Khan stressed that Israel had the right to defend uh, its population. He claimed that regardless of any military goals Israel wants to achieve uh, in Gaza, the prosecution believes it's a means to achieve them, namely internationally causing death, starvation, great suffering and serious injury to body or health of the civilian population were criminal. Ukrainian forces said on Tuesday they had uh, shot down 28 out of 29 uh, drones uh, used by uh, Russian forces uh, in an overnight attack on seven uh, regions. Uh, in a statement, uh, the forces uh, said a drone attack damaged four private residences. Uh, says uh, 25 trucks and uh, buses in uh, Kharkiv, uh, injuring five people. A missile attack targeted transport infrastructure and injured two more people in the city. Meanwhile, a Ukrainian uh, drone attack on the Russian border uh, region of uh, Belgorod uh, killed one woman and wounded three other. Belgorod governor said uh, that the kamikaze uh, drone had attacked a moving car in which uh, there was a driver uh, and uh, three passengers and as a result of injuries sustained in the explosion, the woman died at the scene and uh, the others in the car were injured. Russian President Vladimir Putin said his forces had launched the new offensive on the Kharkiv region two weeks ago to create a buffer zone to protect Russian frontier villages from Ukrainian attacks. Russia on Tuesday announced the start of uh, tactical nuclear weapons uh, drills in its southern uh, military district uh, closed uh, to Ukraine. The Russian Defense Ministry said that, that drills would uh, test uh, the readiness of the non-strategic nuclear weapons to ensure the territorial uh, integrity and sovereignty of the Russian state. The ministry further said that, that the drills were uh, a response uh, to provocative uh, statements and threats by certain Western officials. 
China said on Tuesday it had claimed uh, to the United States over Secretary of State Antony Blinken congratulating self-ruled uh, Taiwan's newly inaugurated President uh, Lai ching Ti. Beijing uh, said his message seriously violates uh, the One uh, China principle and sends a wrong single uh, to separatist uh, forces. Condemning uh, the attendance, uh, China called it crude in interference uh, in China's internal affairs and claimed that it uh, in Davin urged uh, peace and stability across uh, the Taiwan Strait. Blinken's uh, statement came as uh, China said it would uh, sanction three U.S. defense companies over the sales uh, of uh, arms to Taiwan. Lai uh, was uh, sworn in on uh, Monday with uh, more than 40 other uh, countries, including Japan and Canada, sending delegations. Eight heads of state who recognized Taiwan were also present at the event. Donald Trump's defense lawyers uh, rested their case Tuesday uh, without uh, the former president uh, following uh, through on a vow uh, to testify as the judge planned uh, jury deliberates uh, in uh, the historic criminal trial for early next week. The judge uh, told uh, Georgers uh, that uh, Closing uh, arguments would uh, take place next Tuesday when each side would make the pitch uh, to the 12 uh, New Yorkers who will ultimately decide uh, Trump's fate. After approximately five weeks, 19 witnesses, uh, reams uh, of documents and uh, sometimes uh, testimony, judgment, uh, they in the first uh, ever uh, trial uh, former U.S. President was drawing closer with a clash against U.S. President Joe Biden less than six months away. The looming jury verdict represents a moment of acute peril for the Republican. Over 1,000 camps uh, have uh, been set up across Pakistan's uh, southern province of uh, Sinji in anticipation of the severe uh, war heat wave. The Pakistan Meteorological Department said on Tuesday temperatures are expected to hit as high as 50 degrees Celsius in parts of rural Sindhi. Schools in the province had already postponed annual examinations scheduled for this week, including a mega port city of Karachi. The heat wave also raises concern about the survival of livestock. The economy news, uh, we started with the headlines as Egypt IMF start a discussion on $1.2 billion uh, climate financing package. With the inflation uh, falling uh, fast, uh, the Bank of England quickly cut rates. Uh, and uh, Yen uh, Yellen says U.S. and Europe uh, must respond uh, jointly to China's industrial overcapacity. Welcome back to Economy News in Details. As Egyptian and International Monetary Fund officials have uh, initiated uh, discussions around uh, 1.2 billion US dollars long term financing uh, package to support Egypt's climate related uh, projects. This came uh, during a meeting that brought together Minister of Environment Yasmin Fouad, uh, representatives uh, from other ministries and entities, and IMF's uh, mission chief uh, for Egypt, Ivana Vad. The new financing is being considered under the IMF's Resilience and Sustainability Facility, which provides extended funding to help countries address long-term challenges like climate change. Fouad said that meeting completed previous gatherings to discuss coordination and cooperation frameworks to enhance environmental and climate policies in Egypt. She also added that, that the previous uh, meetings dealt with a set of clarifications uh, 
between uh, the two sides about the required reforms in uh, climate policies. Egypt had uh, launched its national uh, climate uh, strategy 2050 and updated the nationally determined uh, contributions twice in uh, recent years. Egypt's uh, stock market indices re retreated uh, in the trading session on Tuesday amid strong selling and purchasing operations by investors on both uh, directions. The benchmark EGX30 index slides by 0.1% to close at 27,224.8 points. The EGX70 index uh, for uh, small and medium businesses uh, lost 0.21% to close at uh, 5,912 point 58 points and the border egx 100 index also lost 0.10 percent to close at 8550 points however the market capitalization gained 946 million pounds to close at 1 trillion and for 841 billion pounds amid transactions of about 20 billion pounds The dollar struggled for direction on Tuesday as investors stuck to their views of the expected timing of the Federal Reserve monetary easing this year. Cypro uh, currencies uh, rallied uh, led by the surge in other, in other uh, on good uh, risk appetite and growing anticipation of the impending approval of spot other uh, exchange uh, traded uh, funds by the U.S. Secretaries uh, and Exchange Commission. The euro edged 0.6% higher to $1.860. Uh, investors expect Thursday's uh, data from the European Central Bank negotiated wage tracker and Eurozone purchasing managers index uh, to provide further clu clues uh, about the monetary cycle in the euro area. Britain's uh, once uh, towering inflation rate looks set uh, to fall closer to the Bank of England's uh, 2% uh, target on, uh, two, on Wednesday, but it was uh, uh, maybe other figures in the data, the influence of Bo's uh, decision on when to cut interest rates uh, for the first time since 2020. Details follow. Britain's once towering inflation rate looks set to fall close to the Bank of England's 2% target on Wednesday, but it may be other figures in the data that influence the BOE's decision on when to cut interest rates for the first time since 2020. Much of the drop in hardline consumer price inflation, a peak of 11.1% a year and a half ago, is due to falling for energy prices which are beyond the BOE's control. Its policymakers are more interested in price pressures generated within Britain's economy, especially its still tight labour market where many employers continue to push for pay at trade that would keep inflation hot. BOE Governor Andrew Bailey has said a first rate cut could come as soon as next month, depending on the data. Inflation in Britain peaked higher than in other big rich economy, for period it was an outlier in the group of seven due to a combination of the energy price surge and a shortage of workers to fill jobs, a problem seen in other countries but compound in Britain by Brexit. Britain's inflation of 3.2% in the 12 months to March remained higher than in Germany, France and Italy, but it was lower than 3.5% in the United States. Pass on higher costs to customers in the form of higher prices, the BOE's regional agents say that it will be harder this year than in 2024. A senior bank official said Tuesday that uh, progress in the U.S. Federal Reserve's uh, fight against inflation likely resumed last month. Additional rate hikes uh, were probably unnecessary. Consumer inflation ticked uh, lower in April, providing Fed uh, policymakers with uh, some good news uh, following an uptick in the first quarter uh, that had led some officials to question whether to cut rates at all this year from their current two-decade highs. Uh, 
On Monday, Fed Vice Chair for Supervision Mike Barr, another permanent member of the bank's rate setting committee, said that, that recent data had not given him the increased confidence he needed to support easing monetary policy. Peru will become only the second nation to exit the IMF support program later this month, according to the Washington-based lender, which cited the country's strong economic fundamentals. The International Monetary Fund said it in the statement, uh, the South American uh, country will exit the flexible credit line when it expires on Sunday, making it the first country to do so since Poland uh, became uh, the first to exit the program in 2017. The IMF set up the FCL in 29 to uh, provide financial support to emerging economies with a stronger macro economic fundamentals helping them meet balance of payment needs during times of crises and boosting market confidence. Puro entered the IMF's FCL program at the start of the COVID-19 pandemic in May 2020, opening up an emergency credit line of around 10 billion euros that was later reduced by half. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said on Tuesday that the United States and also Europe need to respond to China's industrial policies in a strategic and united way to keep manufacturers viable on both sides of the Atlantic. Yellen said China's industrial policy may seem remote as we sit here in this room, but if we do not respond strategically and in a united way, the viability of the businesses in both our countries and around the world could be at risk. Details follow. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said on Tuesday that the United States and Europe needed to respond to China's industrial policies in a strategic and united way to keep manufacturers viable on both sides of the Atlantic. In remarks on the importance of the U.S.-European alliance in Frankfurt, Yellen said China's excess industrial capacity threatened both American and European firms as well as the industrial development of emerging market countries. Her comments come a week after the Biden administration announced steep new tariffs on Chinese electric vehicles, solar products, semiconductors, battery parts, steel and other strategic industries. She had warned Chinese officials in April that the U.S. would not accept their excess production of their goods that would flood global markets with cheap exports. Finance leaders from the group of seven industrial democracies are meeting in Strizia, Italy, later this week and Yellen is pushing for them to agree on a plan to use the income stream from the frozen Russian sovereign assets to back a larger loan to Ukraine. Now with the sports headlines as Egyptian Premier League 24th round resumes. Nadal targets a final fling on Ronald Garros. Pogacar continues the Giro dominance on day of rider protests. Now the sports news in details as Baladeyat Al Mahalla beat uh, Al Dakhliya 1-0 in the 24th round of the Egyptian uh, Premier League uh, which uh, resumed on uh, Tuesday. Hussam Ashraf uh, scored the game only goal uh, for uh, Baladeyat Al Mahalla in the 34th minute. By this uh, win Al Dakhliya balance uh, was uh, frozen at 12 points at the bottom of the league uh, standings while Al Mahalla raised uh, the to 22 points in the 15th spot. 
Forward, uh, Marcus uh, Rashford uh, was the most high profile omission uh, as England manager Gathi Sotagate uh, named his uh, provincial uh, Euro 2024 squad on Tuesday, while there was uh, also no place for experienced midfielder Jordan Henderson. Several uh, uncapped uh, Players, uh, Liverpool, Dew Curtis Jones and Javal Quantas, uh, Everton defender uh, Jarad uh, Barath Waite and uh, Crystal B Palace's Adam uh, Wartoon did make uh, the provincial list of 33. Southgate uh, will uh, cut his uh, squad to 26 by the 7th of June deadline. The Inclusion of Rashford and former Liverpool midfielder Renderson were the big surprises given to the loyalty Southgate has shown them and their roles in previous tournament runs. Rashford has earned 60 caps and scored 17 goals, including their, the three at the 2022 World Cup in Qatar. However, has struggled for form this season with only seven Premier League goals for Manchester United. Chelsea forward Raheem Sterling also missed out, but his teammate Cole Palmer was included after the superb season. Well, uh, no task in tennis has been as difficult as uh, defeating uh, Rafael Nadal at Ronald Carlos. Uh, the Spartan uh, owns uh, the record for uh, most titles uh, and wins at the clay uh, court major. Details follow. Rafael Nadal hopes to play in the French Open, but uh, niggling injuries threaten to soar what would likely to be Spaniard's last appearance at the Grand Slam he dominated for nearly two decades. The 37-year-old, who won 14 of his 22 major titles in Paris to establish himself as one of the greatest ever players on clay, skipped the 2023 edition with a hip injury that required surgery and is still in two minds whether to play this year. Having already announced that 2024 could be his final season on the tour, Nadal returned to action in January but sustained a small muscle problem that stalled his progress before he made another comeback during the European clay court swing. Following a second round defeat at Barcelona, Nadal cranked up his level to go on a surprise run to the Madrid fourth round and delight fans, but in Rome, a crushing loss to Herbert Hercas in his second match dampened the spirits ahead of Roland Garros. Nadal's indomitable spirit, despite a plethora of injuries in his glittering career, has never been in question, but the former world number one risks being dumped out prematurely at his happiest hunting ground. His earliest exit from the tournament came in 2016 when a rest problem forced him to withdraw ahead of his third round clash with courtman Marcel Grandlers and the only lost three times in 115 matches. Despite previously stressing that he would play in Paris only if he felt fully fit and competitive, Nadal understands the importance of going out in his own terms as he did in front of Thierry fans in Barcelona, Madrid and Rome. Nadal said that as a player he wants to be remembered for the results that he had while as a person he hopes to be remembered as a positive example of being respectful, well educated and a good person. Tennis fans will be hoping for one last era. Tadej Pogacar continued his dominance of the Giro d'Italia after pounding his way to victory in Tuesday's shortened sixth stage, which started three hours late after riders rebelled at demands they race through snow. Details in the following report. 
The 16th stage of the Giri d'Italia was delayed and then shortened by extreme weather conditions on Tuesday as a standoff between riders and organizers descended into chaos. Freezing rain and snow in the Dolmite Mountains meant the stage from Livengo, which had been scheduled to climb to almost 2,500 meters, was changed at the last minute. The deteriorating conditions in the mountains prompted riders to vote on skipping the the Umbriel Pass and a treacherous descent, citing safety issues. Confusion and anger reigned in Levingo before organizers decided on a new start point with a stage distance at 121 km from Laza Las. A statement from organizers RCS accused risers of falling to stick to an agreement to start the race in Levigno. Riders had a different view with Ben O'Connor calling organizers dinosaurs. O'Connor told reporters that it's probably one of the worst organized races and that this would never happen in 99% of the other situations. He added that it's just a shame that it is in in 2024 and you have dinosaurs who really don't see the human side of things. The shortened stage which still features tough climbs began in heavy rains. Tajit Bugdukar has a commanding lead in the overall standing 6 minutes 41 seconds ahead of Jiren Thomas. Slovenian cycling superstar Bugdukar burst in the fifth stage win to his first ever Giro to extend his Jews lead to the top of the general classification and close in one-third triumph at a Grand Tour. The two-time Tour de France winner could have held his position in the peloton and still led a three-week race handsomely but surged past Giulio Pelizari in the final kilometer before holding five fingers aloft as he crossed the line. Well, uh, with this, we come to the end of Panorama News. Uh, my name is Amal Mukhtar. Thank you for watching.